the James Webb Space Telescope aims to uncover evidence of the universe's first stars, also known as the first population or generation of stars. Recently, Maiolino and colleagues published a paper claiming to have found such evidence in the galaxy GNZ-11. Before James Webb Space Telescope's launch, GNZ-11 held the record as the most distant galaxy, with its light traveling 13.3 billion years to reach us, allowing us to observe it when the universe was just 430 million years old. Although James Webb Space Telescope has since discovered galaxies surpassing this distance, GNZ-11 remains a focus of study due to its wealth of data. However, interpreting James Webb Space Telescope's groundbreaking data presents ongoing challenges, leaving room for further analysis and discovery. In this video, we'll cover three main points of discussion. We'll start by exploring the nature of Population 3 stars, then delve into their pivotal role in shaping the universe's evolution. Finally, We'll analyze the evidence presented by Maiolino and collaborators regarding Population 3 stars in Galaxy GNZ-11. Let's start by discussing Population 3 stars, the first stars to appear in the early universe. At that time, the cosmos primarily consisted of hydrogen, 75%, and helium, 25%, with trace amounts of lithium. All heavier elements, such as carbon, oxygen, and iron, essential for our planet and life, were synthesized within stars through nuclear fusion processes. As stars fuse lighter elements into heavier ones, they emit light and heat. This process also leaves distinct imprints, or gaps, in a star's spectrum due to the presence of heavier elements known as metals. Each element absorbs specific wavelengths of light, creating dark lines in the spectrum. By analyzing these spectral patterns, Astronomers can determine a star's composition and age. The more gaps there are in a star's spectrum, the more metals there are in that star's atmosphere. Therefore, if a star exhibits numerous gaps, it indicates a higher metallicity, suggesting that it formed later in the universe's history. This implies that enough generations of stars had already lived and died, enriching the cosmos with heavier elements through their stellar processes. In the early 20th century, Astronomers like John Ort and Walter Bodd observed missing colors in star spectra, leading to the classification of stars into two categories, Population 1 and Population 2. Population 1 stars, like our Sun, are young and rich in metals, found in the Milky Way's vicinity. On the other hand, Population 2 stars are metal poor, formed from purer hydrogen and helium gas, indicating older stars. These stars are typically located towards the center of the Milky Way. When scientists began contemplating the universe's initial stars, formed from even purer hydrogen and helium gas, they continued the naming convention and designated them as Population 3 stars. These stars represent the earliest generation, devoid of heavier elements, and are crucial in understanding the universe's evolution. As the first stars, they initiated the production of crucial elements like carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, essential for planet formation and life's existence. Moreover, they played a pivotal role in reionizing the early universe, marking a crucial phase in cosmic evolution. During the early universe, extreme heat prevented the formation of neutral atoms, leaving particles like protons and electrons freely moving as charged particles in a plasma, making the universe opaque. As the universe gradually cooled over time, the energetic environment began to favor the formation of neutral atoms, primarily hydrogen and helium. The transition from a hot, ionized plasma to a state where atoms could bind together marked a pivotal moment in the universe's history. With the formation of these neutral atoms, the universe became transparent, allowing light to travel freely through space, initiating the birth of stars and galaxies from hydrogen gas. However, this newfound transparency was not permanent. Energy from the first stars soon re-ionized the surrounding gas restarting the ionization process, a phenomenon known as reionization. Population 3 stars, although hypothetical, played a significant role in shaping our understanding of the universe's evolution. Lacking heavier elements, these stars could grow exceptionally large and bright, yet their lifespan was brief, estimated at a maximum of 100,000 years. Despite their short existence, Theoretical models suggest their impact on the cosmos was profound. Finding evidence for Population 3 stars is a key challenge in astronomy. This task requires observing the most distant objects, 
hoping to catch a glimpse of these elusive stars within their brief window of existence. The James Webb Space Telescope is instrumental in this endeavor, equipped to collect light from faint distant objects and detect infrared wavelengths. These capabilities are crucial for observing objects as they appeared billions of years ago, their light stretched into the infrared by the expansion of the universe. Maiolino and collaborators have uncovered intriguing evidence pertaining to Population 3 stars. They detected a cluster of helium gas emitting light at a very distinct wavelength, indicative of intense ionization from a highly energetic source. Positioned near, but not within, the galaxy GNZ 11, this helium-laden gas forms what is known as a halo around the galaxy. While such gas halos are not uncommon and are observed in various locations, the unique aspect here is the absence of accompanying bright emissions from metal elements like carbon, typically associated with helium clumps. Upon examination of the data, it's evident that while carbon emissions are present in the vicinity of GNZ 11, they do not coincide with the region where the helium glow is observed. Additionally, analysis reveals the presence of hydrogen in the clump, as indicated by Lyman alpha emission, a well-documented hydrogen signature. This suggests that the observed clump comprises a mixture of hydrogen and helium gas with minimal metal content, strongly ionized by an unknown energetic source. But what is the mysterious source behind the intense ionization of this gas clump? The energy required to ionize helium gas at such a specific wavelength typically arises from either population 3 stars or a growing supermassive black hole. While the latter is a possibility, modeling suggests that the emitted energy from the region surrounding a supermassive black hole at the center of GNZ11 would diminish significantly with distance. Here, the purple line represents the predicted brightness based on the energy from a supermassive black hole, while the yellow marker indicates the actual observed brightness of the helium clump at that distance from GNZ11. So, it appears unlikely that a supermassive black hole is responsible for ionizing the helium clump. The remaining explanation points to population 3 stars forming in the halo of gas around GNZ11 as the source of ionization. This marks the first evidence for population 3 stars. Although not visible in James Webb Space Telescope's infrared light images due to their scarcity, Maiolino and collaborators estimate their total mass in the halo to be approximately 600,000 times that of the Sun. Given that population 3 stars are typically 500 to 600 times the mass of the Sun, this suggests the presence of around a thousand such stars responsible for ionizing the helium. It's a fascinating discovery with significant implications. The discovery of potential population 3 stars in the halo of GNZ 11 presents compelling evidence, but also raises intriguing questions. While the glow of helium gas suggests the presence of these early stars, there could be alternative explanations, such as foreground objects masquerading as distant emissions. Further observations, perhaps utilizing the James Webb Space Telescope to analyze the region across a broader wavelength range, are needed to confirm these findings. Additionally, discovering more instances of such phenomena would strengthen the case for the ubiquity of population 3 stars in the early universe. Despite the complexity and ongoing debate, it's clear that this research marks a significant step forward in our understanding of the universe's earliest stages and the formation of its first stars. As exploration and investigation continue, we can anticipate further discoveries and insights into this fascinating aspect of cosmic history. That's all we have for you in this episode. We hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Until then, stay curious.